G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, unfortunately it's another red day basically. Market cap down a little bit, Bitcoin's gone down, it's not done anything in now, but in the last seven days it's down 6% and in the last 24 hours it's down 1.4%. Now unfortunately, I think we're in for a little bit more pain, but there may be an upside uh, in the not too distant future uh, and we'll have a look. Now the reason I think uh, we're in for more pain so let's go over here and have a look at the fear and greed index. Currently it's only sitting at about 39. That's still pretty much sort of neutral. So that makes me think we're going to have to sink a little bit lower before the bulls come in and, you know, do their sort of thing. I think the, the bears are going to be uh, continuing their work for a little while. Now this isn't a golden rule, but generally when things are really fearful is when you have a really good pump. When everything gets too exuberant is when you get a really big pullback, a retracement. And we were pretty bullish until not too long ago. As we can see, 75, we were green just last month, uh, last week. So a little bit neutral. And today we're starting to get into that fear territory. So I think there is going to be some bullish sentiment in the near future. But I think, unfortunately, at the moment, it's probably going to be a little bit more downside. But let's have a look at some charts to help us understand what's going on. Dow Jones, so we're uh, closely correlated to it. A lot of the markets are closely correlated these days, in all fairness, including cryptocurrency. We're much the same. But let's have a look. The Dow Jones, it's down. So it's actually fallen over and it's been on a bit of a uh, downward spiral. So we saw we got up here, dropped down, a little bit of a fake out, and dropped down again. All right. S&P 500, have a look at this. So we're up, we dropped down. A little bit of a fake out, we drop down. Let's have a look at gold. Not quite the same, but still we're up. We drop down, a little bit of a fake out, and we've dropped down again. There's a bit of a correlating sort of theme going on here. Now let's have a look at Bitcoin. Pumped up, drop down, a little bit of a fake out, and we've dropped down again. So all of these markets are highly correlated. Now they're not exactly the same, they're never going to be, but they are highly, highly corrugate, correlated, sorry, not corrugated. Well, they are corrugated, that's a little bit corrugated-ish right there, but correlated is the word that I'm looking for. Now we can see here is the CME gap. I am still highly suspicious that this is going to be covered and we're not that far from it right now. Let's have a look, let's do a measuring tool. Right, from where we are right now, down to the CME gap. Oh. So that's only 6%. We would only have to drop 6% from here to cover the, the whole, that's the whole gap as well. So that's the $9,600 level. It starts from around about 9,600 and runs all the way through to about 9,800. So we wouldn't have to drop that far. And that's what makes me think this could happen. But at the moment, we're in this kind of triangle figure here. You can see this encompasses everything. We've pumped up, we've come down, and we've tested the bottom, and we've pumped up, and we're coming back down, and we're going to test this. But this is what makes me think in the not-too-distant future, well, not think, obviously something is going to happen, but let's say at the absolute sort of latest is around about November, and that's around about election time. Something is going to happen that's going to change uh, the course of you know what's currently happening at the moment. Now, I do think more stimulus is going to come out in the not-too-distant future at all, and that's really going to change things. And obviously, we're all hoping that we break out to the upside, but it might be that we break out to the downside, hit this CME gap, which is still on this greater trend line at the moment. So this is that greater trend line. We've still broken out for it. Everyone's, you know, who's new to crypto and maybe investing in general is thinking, oh, they just pump up and they go up forever. No, they, they are quite... Uh, volatile and look it's not just Bitcoin this is Bitcoin I mean that is quite volatile it's all over the place that looks somewhat volatile as well it's sort of all over the place up and down so this is our traditional markets this is the Dow Jones that looks pretty volatile to me now not on the same scale as cryptocurrencies but it's not just always up I mean this was a great move right here but it retraced there it retraced there it retraced there you know what I mean? This was a great move. Everyone was probably thinking, oh, we're done. Nah, look at that massive fall. It kept going. All right. 
S and P five hundred, the same thing. It's up, it's down, it's up, it's down, it's up, it's down. It's all over the place, and these markets all look eerily similar. Look at that. Look at that. And sorry, Bitcoin. Yeah, look at that. They are all very eerily, eerily similar. Now there is one market that's doing well at the moment. Well, I wouldn't say well, but it is why all these assets are selling off. Here's the Dixie, so it's the US dollar. So it broke out a while ago, and it just continues to go up. So this, to me, signals that there's uncertainty in the market, and people are holding on to cash at the moment because they don't want to have their money, uh, too much of their money anyway, in uh, assets that are going down at the moment, unfortunately, and they're waiting until they feel that there's a bottom that comes in, and then they'll put all that cash back in. But at the moment, they're holding some cash on the side. And that's not a bad idea. I'm not going to invest at the moment. I'm going to wait and see. So I'm not even going to do my sort of fortnightly uh, buy-ins. Uh, we've just been bleeding too much for a while now, so I'm just going to hold off. I'm still in profit overall. Don't get me wrong. I've definitely got projects that are down like about 40%, but they weren't down that much as well. Now, there is some uh, hope for optimist. Uh, uh, some hope for optimism, as I said before. And again, so the fear and greed index, it's starting to get into that, you know, f real fear territory down here. And this is where it's most likely going to bounce. Once it gets down into here, it'll bounce in the neutral. Not too much happens. When it gets too bullish, obviously there becomes a, a retracement. And look, the whales and the big investors and things, they're watching stuff like this. And, and they're, you know, they're doing their counter trades off that. When it gets fearful, they'll buy and watch it pump up. And then when it gets, you know, a bit overhyped, they'll sell off. And it's their way of keeping liquid and increasing their profit at all times. They're going to short and they're going to long and all the rest of it. And they generally counter trade against the general trend. And because they own so much, they can swing the market a little bit more. Like if I was to sell all my Bitcoin right now, and trust me, I don't have a lot. I wish I had a whole lot more. Nothing would happen to the market. It wouldn't change it at all. Not in one tiny, well, maybe in some very tiny little way. Maybe if I sold all my Bitcoin, Bitcoin would drop by, I don't know, 0 0.001 of a cent or something. <laughs> I don't even know. But the bigger guys who own hundreds and thousands of Bitcoins and things like that, they can affect the market. And again, they're longing it and shorting it and all the rest of it, and particularly the whales. So they're going to wait until it's extremely fearish because everyone's sold off, and then they're going to have their cash ready to go, and they are going to buy Bitcoin. And once the price starts to pump up a little bit, everyone else is going to jump in and go, oh, sweet, the, you know, the bull run started, and it's going to get over here, and everyone's going to be super bullish. And then guess what the bigger players do? They sell off and turn it all bearish. Now, when they first sell off, it gets back to about neutral. And if everyone else keeps selling off, and they'll gradually sell off. They don't sell it all in one big hit. They sell, you know, bits and pieces to affect the market. So then when it gets all the way back here, and remember, they sold off over here, back to about here. And once it gets down to here, they take the cash from when they sold over here, put it all back in, and watch it go up. And it's just back and forth. So negative, positive negative, positive, and they're counter trading. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. Can you see the correlation? And again, the big guys are generally trading against the general theme of the market. Not always, it's just a generalization. So if you're into you know, longing and shorting the market and things like that, that's generally the way to go, is bet against the trend of the market. Now, don't always bet against Bitcoin because as we can see, if we zoom out, Bitcoin's just basically been going up for a really long time and it was even lower than this. So this was the high, dropped off, high, dropped off. That's what it does. There we go. We can see from over here. It's just a common theme. So we don't want to bet against the market overall. If you're going to get into, you know, trading, day trading, I'm an investor, I don't do it, but that's how they do it. And that's why I haven't sold anything at the moment because I know this is going up in the long run. Now, just my personal opinion, not financial advice, but I am 100% confident this is still in a bull market and we are going to go up. Short of some massive economic collapse, it's going to continue to go up. 
Does that mean we can't sell off? Uh, of course we could sell off. Now, this could sell off and come back and touch down here. And really, until we're below sort of $6,000 at the moment, I'm not bearish. Don't get me wrong, I will be hurting and I'll be in tears like everyone else if it got down to here. But I wouldn't be too concerned. It's once we get below, again, this is our the main trend line that we need to watch. This just so shows the lows are getting higher and higher. And this is still well above that line. Again, I don't think it's going to go down to here, but could it? Yes, unfortunately, it absolutely could. And it could go lower. I mean, oil went to minus $50 or something not that long ago. So if the pandemic gets really worse and there is a major global economic downturn, yes, absolutely, this could go lower. But I really think it's going to trade in along here. At some stage, we might pull down and uh, cover that CME gap. But I believe there will be a new stimulus package. In the States, they're already lobbying for a new stimulus package. And when we do, we might have already come down and hit this, or we might not. We sort of might be chopping and changing in and around here. I am expecting us to get up to this sort of $14,000 level. That's where I believe we're going to go. I think we'll get through that sort of $12,500 level reasonably quickly once the new stimulus package gets rolled out. And I think we'll start to come up and test kind of the $14,000 level. Now, that's just my personal opinion, not financial advice. But let me know your thoughts. Do you believe a stimulus package is going to come out soon? And do you think it's going to uh, quickly be put into the assets, which are all down a little bit at the moment? So again, the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, gold and things like that. Or do you think people are still just going to stay in the dollar at the moment? Because here we can see the Dixie already selling off a little bit there. But that's just a tiny little uh, start of the day candle so we need to wait and see that absolutely could still turn green so again do you think there's a new stimulus package coming please let me know in the comments down below uh, please subscribe to my channel if you like the content that I'm doing I am constantly working on it but I have a full-time job and I have a family that I have to look after so I don't have all the time in the world to do it but I hope one day maybe I could be a full-time YouTube uh, you know content provider and things like that and I'm also on Twitter so you can follow me at at under at one the number one under slash man's journey uh, on Twitter uh, and I do have a Facebook page I haven't really done with it done too much of it at the moment but I will in the future but yeah please let me know what you think leave a comment down below hit the like button if you like what I'm doing and subscribe but to leave everyone on one positive note because things aren't overly positive at the moment we have been trending downwards for quite some time so there we go. Since the 16th of August, things have kind of been going on a downward trajectory. So that's over a month now. Here's another Bitcoin chart. Now this is on the monthly, say. And this is going all the way back to since 2011 and August 2011. But all these arrows here are September's on the monthly. 2011 September, red. 2012 September, green but not much green 2013 September red 2014 September red 2015 September green but only just a little bit 2016 green but only just a little bit 2017 red 2018 red 2019 red 2020 red there's a fairly common theme here that september's are traditionally bad months for bitcoin so what generally happens after though now it continued to be red here it was basically green after this there was a red month the next month but then it was green had a red but then it was followed by green red followed by red green followed by a further green green followed by more uh, this was a red one, but followed by more positive action. So basically what this correlates to is that most of the time, around about 60% of the time, after September, whether it's a green or a red month, doesn't really matter, there's usually further upside. But something I want you to keep in mind is what happens more so after a September, after a halving, the first September after a halving. This is the first September after the last halving positive this is the first september after a halving very positive we even had a red september the second september after a halving but it was positive 
a red September after the halving, which was negative, but it was still positive after it. So that's what makes me think, here we are. We have a red September, and I believe more stimulus packages are going to come out uh, in the not too distant future. I think next month, we're probably gonna do all right. That doesn't mean this can't sell off a little bit more, and that doesn't mean that October can't start off in the red. Again, we might come down and cover that $9,600 level and hit that CME gap, and we might even go lower, who knows? But I am somewhat confident that October overall is going to be a positive month and possibly even November as well. But November is the US election and that's really gonna you know, sort of dictate what happens. If Trump gets in, he's gonna, probably gonna ensure that the stock market and things like that continue to go up. If Biden gets in, uh, possibly not. He might pull the shoestrings and really tighten up and things could get really hard. But again, overall, I believe next month is probably going to be positive. Now, will it be one of these kind of positives? Probably not but I think it'll be probably more something like this. But we'll have to wait and see. I could be wrong. Let me know what your thoughts are. Do you think next month is going to be a positive month? And I, uh, do you believe in this sort of chart that I brought up here? So these big lines, these are the halvings. So these are all the halvings that we've had. And after a halving, it's generally positive. After a halving, it's positive. After a halving, it is positive. It's just we've had a couple of you know retracements. They're not unheard of. Halving, retracement, retracement, retracement. Halving, retracement, 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 retracement. So they do happen even in bull markets. It's not that you can't have red months, but the overall theme is it's very positive after every halving. So this was super you know, bullish here. This was extremely bullish here, and we're probably gonna have a fairly extremely bullish one after here as well, but time will tell. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train today, but there might've been a couple of gains in there, I'm sure, and I hope that you were on them. I don't think I was. I'll see you next time.